Thanks for being here. Um, you know, we've been through a lot these past, I guess, now going on, well, almost uh, 10 years in the city's financial crisis. There have been a lot of times where there have been difficult votes, a lot of difficult times for city employees, residents, businesses, as we try to solve the financial crisis. Uh, today is the beginning of the end of Pittsburgh's financial distress. We've been placed in a situation that really has been created through unrealistic expenses, false revenues. They've kept us from solving our problems. Today is a new day, a new era of truth in budgeting. In the next five years, we will finally solve the city's financial crisis. It will require shared sacrifices from all of us to do it. There's nearly $35 million in structural changes through fiscal responsibility that starts today. Let's walk through it a little bit. We're overhauling our entire budget. We're stripping it down and then building it back up. Through the preliminary forecast, and you can see it in the chart, our Office of Management and Budget, together with the Controller's Office, the Council Budget Office, Act 47, and ICA, have identified that our projections will basically eat away from our surplus and at the same time strip us down to the point where we're not able to operate the city's budget. We're going to show the people where the unrealistic expenses are and where the false revenues have been hidden. Looking at the $35 million structural problems that need to be addressed, $21 million increase in expenditures from 2014, $2.2 million in operating costs that were previously funded in the capital budget, items that should have always been in our operating budget but were simply being put off into capital, $7.3 million reduction in the real estate tax revenues because of a miscalculation on the millage rate, and 4.4 million less in projected revenues from other sources. And finally, we're creating a fiscally responsible solution to finally solve our problem through the shared sacrifices. On the expenditure side, looking at 23.3 million dollars, uh, this includes the actions that were taken at the end of December 2013 to lower the assumption on investment returns. That's created an $8 million gap in what we need to fund our pension funds that increase will increase to $11.4 million. Our health benefits are increasing $2.7 million. Our debt service is increasing $2 million. Our public safety premium pay, something that we have never fully funded. We have never funded all the police officers that we put into our budget, and because of that, we shift expenses at the end of the year. We're going to put our police on the street. We have $5 million increase based on truth in budgeting. And public safety equipment and other expenses that have been hidden in the capital budget being put where they're supposed to be put in the operating budget cost us an additional $2.2 million. Combined, that means that we have $23.2 million in expenses that we haven't accounted for in the past. Our revenue, we have an $11.7 million gap between what we've shown in revenue in past budgets and what's really there and what we're getting. We have $7.3 less million dollars from our real estate because of the miscalculation in setting the new millage back in 2013. A URA pilot that we've never received of 1.5 million that we put in our budget every year. EMS revenue that's fallen short by 1.3 million on a consistent basis. Public service privilege of 600,000, fines and forfeitures of 500,000, and nonprofit pilots of 400,000. Combined, these are all the issues that have created $11.7 million in phantom revenues, revenues that just simply don't exist but are put into our budget. And finally, the key components of the solution. Parking revenue, $10 million increase from the parking authority. That follows the plan that the city council and the controller created to save our pension that has never come to the city. It sat at the parking authority. When we raised those meter rates, that money was supposed to come to the city. We'll now be receiving that money. 
elimination of 75 vacant positions. Um, positions that we had decided not to fill uh, throughout the year, we are going to eliminate them out of the budget, eliminating 75 positions as well. Debt refinancing will be able to save $3.7 million this year in a debt restructure by taking advantage of lower rates. Uh, reduction in non-personnel expenditures. Department by department, we're cutting out uh, items such as office equipment uh, and other non-personnel type of uh, expenses to reduce the amount that we're spending in government. Uh, maximum compensation allocations uh, through Act 47. These are the parts of the plan that we're, that we're part of going forward. So we started with what the Act 47 plan was, then we took a more fiscally responsible position in pushing forward even beyond that. And then an adjustment to the real estate that recalculates it by increasing a half mil in order to be able to make the gap of the $35 million savings. That recalculation ends up being about 20% of the solution of the full $35 million. To give you more details about this, to go specifically into each of these different parts, I've asked our new budget director, Sam Ashbaugh, to go through what his office has been working on in conjunction with City Council, the controller, Act 47, and ICA. Sam? Great. Thank you, Mayor. Um, as this slide um, highlights, what we were going to do in the next few slides is kind of go in a little bit more detail of the key points that the mayor just announced. Um, I think one thing that's important to note here, the key, there's about five key items that represent the key cost drivers uh, for the 2015 budget. Uh, about $11.4 million related to pension costs. As a, um, the city and the pension board in 2013 uh, lowered the assumption rate for investment returns, and that act alone created about approximately $8 million hole in the city's budget without identifying a corresponding revenue uh, increase. In addition to uh, change in mortality rates, thankfully uh, our employees are living and pensioners are living longer, but that also increased costs. So those two actions together create $11.4 million gap that we need to uh, address as part of the long-term financial plan. Uh, as I said, health benefits, based on our current um, plans in effect, we're projecting close to a $3 million increase um, over our current uh, 2014 budgeted rates. Uh, debt service, this is based on our current debt structure as it, uh, it currently exists today, um, and we are going to look forward to uh, debt refinancing uh, to save approximately $4 million um, as part of our new five-year plan going forward. Uh, public safety premium pay, uh, this is an example of truth in budgeting that the mayor alluded to. Um, I can tell you for probably the last couple years, we've never accurately budgeted for public safety premium pay. And so as a result, at the end of the year, we have to rob Peter to pay Paul. Um, in a few weeks, we'll be submitting legislation to council to transfer approximately $4.5 million from all other non-public safety departments to fund uh, premium pay overages in uh, the public safety departments. Uh, every year, the budget staff would uh, prepare their projections based on operational needs and uh, financial analysis, but they were never allowed to adequately budget for police premium pay. And so these types of fiscal illusions artificially um, kept the uh, city's expenditures lower than they accurately were. So uh, this is a new day for you know how the city approaches budgeting financial management. Uh, truth in budgeting, um, we're going to be upfront about what the actual costs of delivering services are and you know provide for adequate funds for um, all of our departments as they need. Uh, and the last one, uh, capital operating, um, what we found in going through the capital budget requests this year, there's historically been about $2.2 million in equipment purchases, mostly for public safety, that were always funded in the capital budget. And we agree that these equipment purchases need to be funded, but they're not appropriate to use um, bond funds that have a um, useful life of 20 million or 20 years for equipment that may have a useful life of you know five to seven years. So, with the, beginning with the 2015 budget, um, this action is consistent with the Act 47 plan recommendations, as well as leading practices in budgeting. We're going to budget these equ um, equipment purchases in the operating budget going forward. And that'll allow us to have a real $30 million in capital funding for real infrastructure and related projects going forward. 
And so those types of things represent, uh, you know, the key cost drivers for 2015. All right. Um, this slide here actually just goes in a little bit more detail uh, what I mentioned about police premium pay. As you can see, the bottom line, the, the blue kind of shows the budget amount and the red shows the actual expenditures for the last couple years. Um, a couple key points to note, um, for police uh, premium pay, the budgeted amount has remained stagnant uh, since 2008, or 2009, EMS since 2008. Um, one thing I think it's important Can you to note. that? Yeah, and basically what happens is every year we would budget the same amount for police and EMS premium pay as we did the previous year. But even if there were no increase in the actual hours worked, just factoring in a 2 or 3% wage increase based on whatever the collective bargaining was agreement was in place at the time, you're going to have an increase in expenditures. So as part of our truth in budgeting, we actually want to um, budget for what the realistic projections are for both of these. And uh, as I said, basically the way these overages were handled every year, and again, and I, were, I was actually the uh, public safety budget analyst for the city of Pittsburgh back in the late 1990s. These practices have been going on for years, um, but again, they're going to stop today. Um, and it, the, the way that we would, uh, the city would address these costs would basically be twofold, not ac adequately hiring public safety classes for police and fire. So even though we had budget 892 officers, we would never allow the police bureau to get to that authorized strength. And second, we would hold vacancies in other operating departments, such as public works and building inspections. We would make them keep positions vacant all year, which would also have an impact on the delivery of core municipal services. So going forward, we're going to adequately budget not only for public safety, but also make sure that our other service delivery departments have the resources they need throughout the year to deliver key services. As Mayor alluded to um, before, uh, real estate, uh, this, the real estate tax is the city's largest revenue source, um, but the 2013 millage adjustments created approximately a $35 million hole in the city's seven, uh, five year plan. Um, in 2013, uh, the millage rate was adjusted down, downward approximately 30%. Um, and what that did is create a uh, de revenues decline from 126.6 million to 119.3 in 2013. And what we found as we're going through the um, budget process for 2015, the Act 47 plan requires us to uh, establish a millage rate that will generate $128 million in current year real estate revenue. And the uh, a revenue neutral millage adjustment of uh, 0 0.5 mills will allow us to achieve compliance with the Act 47 plan, but more importantly, prevent drastic cutbacks in core municipal services. So as a result of that $7 million, what that would fund or the consequence of not doing this action would be reducing the police force by approximately 75 officers, closing five fire stations, completely shutting three departments, city planning, building inspection, and animal control, or eliminating 20% of the public works, such as one of the um, public works divisions. Um, these types of cutbacks are not acceptable to the mayor or in his administration, and we're committed to you know, putting forth a solid financial plan um, that provides a you know, solid uh, future for the city's finances and service delivery. And as you can see on the, um, the chart on the, uh, the right here of the graph, it shows uh, for the last, since 2005, what the actual millage rate has been, as well as the real estate revenues. And you can see the action um, of the millage redu reduction in 2013 had that significant drop in revenues. And we're still at that, um, even though the 2014 budget uh, projected $124 million, we're still um, several million dollars short this year in real estate revenues as we reported in our quarterly, second quarter report um, earlier this year. Um, in addition to real estate, one of the things uh, we found uh, as part of the budget uh, development process, we have what we call a consensus revenue forecasting approach. And that means we work with uh, city council's budget office, the city controller, Act 47, and the ICA to come together and meet and discuss what our revenue projections are. 
Um, in, the, in the past, uh, revenue projections, the mayor's office would um, develop revenue projections that were very rosy. Then would, they would go to city council and then maybe they, those would be changed. And then as a result, you would have revenue projections that were completely unrealistic. And then you would find yourself having to do mid-year corrections the next year. So as a best practice, as outlined in the Act 47 plan, all the parties got together over the summer. We met, we used the baseline of the Act 47 plan, um, which was passed by City Council in June. And from there, we looked at what the finance department's um, revenue projections were and discussed where we were on the same page, where there were some differences, and where the gaps were, what the reasons were. And so using this approach allows us to avoid some of the games of each side trying to manipulate the revenues um, to their advantage later on in the process. Um, but as we found, there are a couple key gaps approximately totaling $4.4 million uh, compared to the Act 47 plan. Uh, some of these, the mayor alluded to the URA pilot. Historically, the city's budgeted $1.5 million as um, payment in lieu of taxes, but it's not realistic to us receive that when we also give the URA money to support core economic development every year. So just having us give the URA money and then pa us pass, then pass it back to us just doesn't make sense. It's a shell game that you know, we want to end going forward. Um, EMS revenue, uh, this, even though uh, EMS charges were increased last year, the uh, revenue assumptions that were in the Act 47 plan fall short by about $1.2 million. So given you know, things that are going on with the Affordable Care Act and how, the impact on uh, medical reimbursements, you know, our, our number, we're, we worked with Act 47 and we're confident that um, the budget figure is accurate going forward. Uh, fines and forfeitures, I know there was an article a couple days ago in the paper. The good news is that people are paying um, their parking uh, uh, meet, or feeding the meters, and so we're not having as less um, ticket revenue um, due to fines. So this is basically just adjusting for you know, current projections and what's happening um, with our actual revenue tick. Uh, Nonprofit uh, pilots. These are just based on actual um, agreements that are currently in place. Uh, the numbers that were in the original plan were um, inflated by a, a couple hundred thousand dollars. So these are some um, developments such as dealing with the housing authority. Uh, there's a couple developments in place where we receive uh, payment in lieu of taxes and those will account for those. Um, so those are kind of the key um, five areas that were, um, added up to about $4.4 million. So, um, you know, given what we found ourselves in, you know, our, here's our, our overall solution, um, as we kind of alluded to, has a number of key parts. Um, I think the most important thing to note, as the mayor said, you know, we're starting with truth in budgeting and transparent financial practices. That's the cornerstone of any solid financial plan. Um, the next, as we talked about, um, looking at our overall revenues. So in accordance with the Act 47 plan, you know, we're recommending the, a revenue neutral millage adjustment to get back the seven uh, and a half million dollars that was cut um, in 2013. So just making us whole um, based on the budget um, that was passed at that point. Uh, as the mayor alluded to, full implementation of the council controller plan. We're, um, so we'll be working with the parking authority to implement that plan um, that was uh, held up over the last couple years. Uh, elimination of 75 vacant positions. As every new director has come in, um, the mayor has asked us all to take a look at our departments and identify you know, where are there opportunities to do more with less. You know, really focus on what positions we really need to do the job um, that, that we need in delivering core services and meeting his priorities. So after all the directors went through, um, we're, it's happy to say, we're happy to say that we were able to eliminate 75 positions um, that will actually increase our savings above and beyond the Act 47 plan recommendations. Um, also, about $10 million over the course of the plan will be a res result of a 5% uh, reduction in non-personnel operating costs across all departments, as well as about $4 million in debt um, service savings that we will get to take advantage of current interest rates um, that are very low. Uh, 
another key component is maximizing opportunities um, for non-tax revenue. Uh, a very a good recommendation of the Act 47 plan uh, was to take a look at all of the licenses and fees and permits that the city has. Uh, some of these have been in place for years, and so really want to look at each fee and permit and understand what is the current fee, what costs, if any, does it cover, and are there opportunities to update those fees to increase revenue um, based on the actual cost of doing business. So those will be a key part um, of the 2015 budget and five-year plan. Uh, most importantly, I think a key component we want to address is increasing our spending on capital infrastructure. Uh, just last Friday night, we had our first capital budget hearing uh, at Ammon Recreation Center in Hill District, and we had a number of citizens that came out and really spoke about what they saw as key infrastructure needs, whether it's um, you know street safety, um, taking care of city's infrastructure, uh, street resurfacing, um, you name it. We received about $70 million in requests from departments this year uh, for capital uh, purchases and equipment, um, but we're able only to fund about a, um, a quarter of that this year. So we really want to focus on ways to maximize our capital expenditures going forward to meet our overall needs. And finally, I think the most important cornerstone of the plan too is consistent with the Act 47 plan in leading practices, uh, our five-year plan will maintain a healthy fund balance of a minimum of 10% of general fund revenues. And so all these actions uh, taken together, you know, will represent a solid plan, you know, for the city's future, um, but most importantly, it's consistent with the Act 47 plan and its primary ob objectives. And I think um, this slide here talks about a number of uh, strategic initiatives um, that are included in the budget. And I don't know if, Mayor, if you want to talk about some of these or um, community development or planning. Why don't you walk through Okay, it? sure. So I think um, you'll be seeing more um, about the Mayor's plans and priorities in the budget that we release to City Council in November, but we just wanted to give you a glimpse of some of the key highlights. Uh, I think the first uh, relates to public safety. Uh, this budget adequately funds um, 892 police officers, 657 firefighters, and 175 paramedics. So we are actually budgeting for those positions and plan to fill them to meet the public safety needs of our city. Um, also, with our new chief of police, uh, we are going to work with Chief McClay um, to uh, look at ways to reorganize the police bureau and also dedicate more re resources to crime analysis um, and administration uh, to look for opportunities um, to align his vision uh, for the bureau as well. Uh, community development and planning. I guess the easiest way to say this is we want to have a real planning department. Uh, the the planning department's been decimated over the last few years, and as all of you know about the mayor's vision for the city, we need people that can understand planning and data and work with you know, community groups, council, and others to um, make that vision a reality. And so this budget will adequately fund a planning department for the city. Uh, building inspection and code enforcement. Uh, Chief Kennedy um, is in the process of uh, designing a reorganization of the Bureau and Building Inspection that will have a number of key components. Uh, one, organizational redesign, uh, process improvement. So really, you know, as you may have uh, seen a couple months ago, up until now, the Bureau didn't even have computers. That's not a way to operate in this day and age. Um, another key component that we're going to look at is, in addition to increased technology, is customer service. So instead of you know, having to come down to you know, Ross Street to get permits or be able to pay online, these are some of the operational improvements that the chief is going to be working on uh, over the next years to bring that department um, into 2015. And finally, I think a key cornerstone of this is you know, overall service delivery transformation and improvement. A uh, couple key examples are um, working with the Department of Public Works to better utilize technology um, to deliver public works services more efficiently and effectively, um, as well as working with the Department of Innovation and Performance. So the Budget Office you know, and IMP will be working together to have a more data-informed and driven approach to city operations. And so we'll be looking at, going forward, uh, opportunities to improve our budget process, but also look at 
opportunities to improve uh, the efficiency and effectiveness of how we deliver. Um, this budget is a starting point, and as the mayor has made um, you know, quite aware to all of his directors, he expects us to continue to look for opportunities for improvement. And so this is going to be an ongoing um, process over the course of this administration. And the kind of the final slide here um, presents the, a summary of the overall financial plan uh, that was delivered to the uh, ICA earlier this morning. Um, and it, as this plan shows, um, a, a healthy uh, operating results every year of the plan without gimmicks and also uh, adequately funds $5 million, a minimum of $5 million over the next two years uh, of PAYGO funds to increase our commitment to capital infrastructure and maintains a healthy fund balance throughout the course of the five-year plan. So I think all these things taken together really show that the city is committed to maintaining the uh, primary objectives of the Act 47 plan, but also making sure that we're doing so with a let through the proper lens of truth and budgeting and getting away from the games of the past. And so uh, without that, um, I think if there's any questions or Mayor, if you'd like to add anything else. Just take questions. So 0.5 uh, millage is this exactly what the land use administration reduced? Yeah, can you go back to that one slide? Sure. If so, uh, Mayor, what were your, did you have concerns at the time that that was reduced? Oops, that sorry. Was the right thing to do, and uh, what would be the cost to the average taxpayer? Sure. So look at the green line. The green line shows you historically since 2005 what the millage rate was for uh, in the city of Pittsburgh. So we charged a millage rate um, across the board that stayed consistent from 2005 up and until 2013. With the reassessments came a reduction in the millage rate from the previous administration. Council isn't privy to the information of having an entire 12-person budget office, an entire finance department, and all that information. We rely heavily, or we relied heavily, upon the information that's given to us and funneled through. We're not going to do that with council. We're going to give them the raw information and show them exactly where the miscalculation was and how we need to correct it in order to be able to get there. If you look at the line, that black line, that shows you the revenue that the property taxes brought in from the city of Pittsburgh. So looking at 2005 and seeing the development occurring in the city, you see that there's an increase in revenue that occurred until 2013 when we reduced it. We are on a trajectory now that goes down, meaning that we don't have money to fix streets. We don't have money to take care of potholes. We don't have money to hire police officers unless we readjust it so that it goes back to where the calculation should have been. What does that calculation look like? If you look at the very very last bar, it is a slight increase of a half a mil, which doesn't even come close to what the millage rate had been before. It's a, it recalculates it so that the revenue stream from property taxes goes back on. What does it mean for the average household? For a $100,000 home, it would be about $40 a year, um, about three and a half dollars per month. On average. Well, what do you say to those taxpayer homeowners whose taxes went up because of the reassessment? So now they're going to go up again. It's not neutral to them. Yeah, there, but you have to remember there were those that went up and those that went down and looking at it neighborhood by neighborhood it varied significantly. We increased the um, uh, the homestead exemption to be able to provide an extra savings to people who have their primary residence in the city, not just the commercial development. And we have been able to increase also that the savings for seniors. Uh, on, on a whole, uh, the increase will be minor and will adjust accordingly. There will be some people that will pay more, but the average cost for a $100,000 house is $3.50 a month. And the total percentage of this part of reaching that $35 million uh, structural change that's needed is approximately 20%. Where are you at with the uh, 
a decrease in nonprofit payment for services it was down to four hundred thousand. Are those in negotiations? Yeah, so those are that's based on the agreements that we presently have with nonprofits for pilot payments. Uh, it doesn't assume anything new until we have a new agreement. But let me explain where we're at with that because it's pretty important. For about the past 10 years, we have lost revenue from our major nonprofits. Our hospitals and our universities have been paying us less and less. And we've gone through it with attempts of trying to tax education and trying lawsuits, which have ended all discussions, all discussions with the nonprofits. It's a non-starter. The city of Pittsburgh has no ability, zero ability to tax nonprofits. And a lot of people in the city don't understand that, that the state prohibits us from putting any type of a requirement on nonprofits to pay. And I think it's important for people to understand that. So we have been negotiating since the beginning of the year with the, the big four. Uh, UPMC, Highmark, Allegheny, West Penn, U uh, University of Pittsburgh and Carnegie Mellon University for a long-term solution. We're not looking to come back every two or three years. We want to look at 10-year plans. But that negotiation is not about paying the day-to-day -day expenses of the city. It's not about what, what money can be put into the operating budget. It's about how they can help us to fix the big problems, the structural issues of this city, our pension, our inability to have an adequate capital campaign, the long-term debt structure of this city, and being able to significantly contribute to be able to solve all of that while we solve our own problem, a very solvable problem of our operating budget. So we are on two tracks with that. We are, we are solving our operating budget the way Pittsburghers do it. We identify the problem, we roll our sleeves up, and we do it. And we're reaching out to our nonprofit community to help us so that by the time that we get to 2019, by the time that there is fiscal solvency in the city, we also have a capital program, a pension program, and a debt structure that will guarantee financial solvency for decades. That is the goal. That's where we're at. Until recently, there had been no communication, there had been no promise of any ability to get there. Where we stand today is about a 50-50 chance of a long-term agreement by the end of the year. 75 positions that were eliminated, were, were they filled? They were all vacant. But they had been filled in the past. These are the positions we offered through early retirement, positions that had become open because of other people leaving, positions that um, had been open possibly for a couple of years. Uh, we're not using vacant positions in order to hide money. That had been a common practice in the city budgeting for decades. Uh, we are putting together what we're going to pay and how we're going to pay it. This is very different. I got, I've worked in City Hall for, this is my 20th year. This is the first day there's ever been a budget that legitimately can say, this is what we owe and this is how we pay for it. Can you explain what police premium pay is? Yep. And why it wasn't kind of Sure. Um, there's actually probably a dozen or so premium pay premium pay codes everything for um, it varies by uh, service so for police uh, some of the I think I uh, let me go back to that slide so for police for example uh, probably the biggest um, cost driver there is court time so when officers have to go to court um, based on the union contract there may be certain um, uh, minimums that they get for being called out to court um, FLSA um, that uh, stands for the Fair Labor Fair Labor Standards Act um, basically it's a very complicated uh, Department of Labor calculation for or that governs if you work um, certain amount of days or hours in a given month you may be in entitled to increased pay um, based on the type of service you're in, police, fire, EMS. Um, worked holidays. For all public safety, they don't work Monday through Friday. Um, so whenever we have holidays, um, they are able entitled to holiday pay um, based on um, the union contracts. Uh, fire, um, we have minimum staffing requirements. Um, so a lot of this has to do with callbacks. Uh, historically, and uh, in some uh, previous years, we would not hire fire classes, and then you would see spikes in premium pay um, of in the millions of dollars. So there's, al there's almost like an equilibrium for in the fire department where you need to maintain staffing at a certain level, otherwise premium pay will go through the roof. 
Um, in EMS, it's really a function of, again, it's a 24 seven operation and they need, you know, certain, certain amount of minimum staffing and also the fact that they're working on holidays. So those are kind of examples of key drivers. Um, and to your point, I mean, I heard a question about why it wasn't budgeted. Uh, basically, the uh, administration at the time instructed the staff not to budget appropriately. And I could tell you, I mean, in a previous life, I worked for the Government Finance Officers Association, and what we, one of the things I did was teach other public finance officials about budgeting and financial management practices, and these are some of the gimmicks that governments would use um, to get through a budget every year. Um, but that's not the type, uh, you know, now that I'm in a leadership position and also, frankly, due to the expectations that the mayor has for us, um, that's not the type of budget we want to have for the city going forward. Let me just jump in on that sure. too, Sam, because it's, this is really important to me, at least. The, the problems that we've faced, I mean, my entire time in city government has always been dealing with a city that was on the brink of bankruptcy and then basically looking at that wall of bankruptcy. And I don't know, I know a lot of the people in this room covered it back in the day when we had to close all the pools, lay off 100 police officers, shut down the rec centers and everything else because we failed to plan. What we have right now is an opportunity to solve the problem. I mean, we can solve this. It's a very solvable problem. It's a number and you have to be able to first strip away everything, figure out what that number is and then how you pay for it and we have a fiscally responsible way to be able to do it. And I keep using that term because the, everybody will always want somebody else to pay for it or somebody else to take the hit or somebody else to do it. But if you can spread it out and share it in a way that there isn't too much of a hit for anyone, and at the end of the term, finally solve a problem that has been lingering for 20 years, then you've got to take that step. You've got to do it. It's about the long-term financial health of this city. And if we can get through these next five years, we can guarantee to a generation ahead of us that they won't inherit the problems that we've had to solve. Mayor, Council uh, Last uh, has, has said they oppose a tax increase. And I think you previously said, said that you would rather not do it either. What went into your decision and you foresee any problems with Council getting this approved? Um, I respect councils, uh, and I, th I think it's really working with one by one each council member, and if certainly they have different ways that they want to be able to approach that part of the $35 million, we'd be certainly open to, to look at it. However, they also have to realize that there was a miscalculation that was done by the previous administration. The real estate tax millage was reduced too much. The, the city is now on an annual basis going to have to pick up the additional costs through either reductions in police, uh, reductions in public works, or increases somewhere else. And if you look at it and you see how the readjustment applies, it is minimal compared to what those hits would be. However, we work in a democratic uh, function of government and the final vote of the budget is left up to council. So if their will is to make those cuts somewhere else or raise taxes somewhere else in order to do so, and they feel that that is less of an impact in it solving a $35 million problem, we'll certainly work with them in order to be able to see it done. However, our long-term look at this is it's not one year. It's, this will affect us every year, and it won't be a one-time revenue hit that will solve the city's financial problem. That's just continuing the nonsense that got us into this situation. So we'll be looking to them to come up with a long-term solution if they're not willing to be able to look at this as part, part, small part, but a part of the solution. <laughs>